They're trying to suppress the story. Was there an altercation? Uh, we don't know because we're not privy to uh, those interviews. I can tell you I've personally seen, though, uh, different videos that have been sent to me, certainly uh, interesting verbiage between people at the Sigma Chi house and Maddie. I get it. Your town doesn't want to have reward posters posted all over when you come and you do your rush. First, we tried calling the phone number we saw online for Sigma Chi, but that has apparently been disconnected. We're sorry. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. Go where they were during that timeline. Like, there's still this big chunk where... Um, you know, as of right now, we've told Moscow PD, Idaho State Police, and the FBI all we know. Um, we're kind of leaving it up to them to piece it together. The reason that people are so interested in the Moscow murder case is because there are so many mysteries that are still hanging out there. The 911 call. Who made it? What was said? How did the second roommate never walk upstairs? Would they call friends over before checking it out themselves? It's just everything about it is sketchy. And I mean, they're young kids, so it's explainable. It's not like, oh, they're guilty for sure. Absolutely not. But I mean, being in a situation where you're in a small town, everyone's related, everyone knows each other. If, you know, people in a powerful group that you know about committed the murders, you're going to be scared. You're not going to say anything because you don't want to be next, right? If it was Sigma Chi and there's a lot of people involved, like you're not going to want to speak up over that. You're going to say, oh, it's some bushy eyed road fucking random ass guy. I don't know who it was yeah, right? WSU police noticed his car on November 29th and reported it. But the arrest wasn't made until like December 26th or something, 27th. And so what's up with that? And they had so many FBI agents. So it's like if there was evidence, you know, they probably looked into him a little bit. And I think that maybe he whatever he had an alibi or things that they initially um, looked at just in a line. Why would they let him drive across the country? They wouldn't if they knew that it was him. They would not have done that. They would have, you know, got his phone records way earlier. Like, why did they wait till December 23rd until he was at his parents' house for a week to get his phone records? I don't know. Something must have happened in that time. They must have. Maybe they interviewed someone and someone dropped a name or they came across something in social media because to apply to get that warrant for his phone, they had to have had something and once they got that they saw the pings and then the pings didn't really prove anything because his phone was not there at the murder scene and then they you know got dna out of the trash to match it to the sheath miraculously why wouldn't they have done that all earlier they could have just brought him in for questioning and got his dna like gave him a cup of coffee and got his dna he was pulled over in indiana you know they still really didn't know much about him supposedly I mean, the whole Brent Kopaka thing is so hush-hush. It's just like, why? Why can't we know about it? Like, was he that dangerous that you needed a SWAT team? I mean, what was he threatening? What was he thinking? Because, I mean, people have PTSD. I had PTSD. Like, I... What? It just makes me hypervigilant. It makes me... <laughs> I mean, I just don't understand. Like, but there has to be something. Like, yeah, he's probably more nervous, more paranoid, but... Why? <laughs> you know, it's just not nothing. Something happened. Why are the gag orders so extensive? Why is there so much secrecy around this case? And it seems like they're trying to protect the reputation of the university. It's obvious. But, I mean, he wasn't from that university, so what is there protect to protect? I think there's a lot in this case. I think the reason that they brought in so many FBI agents is because they wanted a clear-cut case where he would just plead guilty because they didn't want this going to trial. They don't want all the dirt being brought up and it seems like that's what's gonna happen. In the beginning, the first story that came out was a frat guy went nuts and I think shot up the party or shot up a place. And then we later learned, I think that's even what Kaylee's mother heard. And then later we learned like it was a stabbing, but we still thought it was, you know, the frat guy because there was some something going on with the frat house. There was some kind of fight with the fraternities, maybe the sorority, 
And that's all being kept quiet. We're not allowed to know. Video footage sent to media outlets in the area showing Sigma Chi fraternity members fighting with Maddie. <laughs> they don't want that to be seen because who knows what they were saying to her, like what kind of disrespect or, or what it was even about. If you watch the Grubhub footage, you can see that Maddie is kind of like sassy. You can see that. But I mean, the truth will set you free. You don't want to be covering up the shit. Let's be honest about what your university offers kids. A nice party time, clearly. And, um, but it's dangerous. So let's just be clear about what you're offering. And we hear so many people say, oh, well, Dylan keeps changing her story. She's never made any public statements at all. So no, she's never changed her freaking story. I mean, they're referring to these Reddit posts from way in the beginning when the roommates heard people rummaging through the house at 2.30 a.m. And they heard a watery sound, which they thought someone was washing their hands, maybe. And then someone on Twitter posted they were getting epithelial cells from the bathroom sink, which <laughs> maybe that was true. Um, what other DNA did they find? Because you know the house is loaded with DNA. So, I mean, if that's the only DNA they have on this guy, it's, it seems like a plant. And I mean, it seems highly coincidental that they were getting all this body cam footage of these girls prior to the incident. The cops knew who they were. Well, they knew the house. And Brian Kohlberger applied for Pullman Police Department. He could have been doing ride-alongs with the Moscow PD. At this point, we don't know how he knows the girls. If he ever knew them or if he just saw them on social media and became obsessed, which I find that highly unlikely. You know, one of the narratives is that he's this, you know, criminal mastermind that just wanted to commit the perfect crime and get away with it. But... There is no way in hell he would have picked that house. Like that house, you never knew who was going to be in there. There was five cars parked out front. You don't know if there's five people in each one of those cars. You don't know if there was a party going on in there. Like, how the hell is this guy just going to walk in there and f with full confidence? And Ethan was a big guy. So, I mean, maybe he didn't know Ethan was there. It just doesn't seem like he would have picked this place if he wanted to commit the perfect crime. He would have picked something that was a lot easier, a lot less public. And, you know, where he wouldn't be caught on all these freaking cameras. And if he has pictures of the victim in his phone, I highly doubt he would have kept that. He's a criminology student, unless he's just really dumb. All of his professors at DeSales University were saying how he's such a brilliant student and they can't believe it and yada, yada, yada. Yet he goes to Washington State University and he's like a piece of shit and he's getting written up and he's getting kicked out of, off of his financial aid and he's just terrible that he's not even going to be a TA the following semester. That just doesn't seem right. Like maybe the cops were on to him and maybe they were working with the university to try to get reactions out of him, to try to make him go to Pennsylvania. I mean, it just doesn't make sense that they need all these freaking FBI agents because Moscow PD was running the investigation. They said that several times that the FBI was just helping them process information, which means they were helping them go through all the videos, helping them do interviews, but they weren't the ones putting all the pieces together, which if you have the FBI there, why don't you let them do their job? that they're probably better than you at. Because everyone in that town is related. Everyone is trying to protect their friends and family and not implicate them. I mean, the messaging from Moscow PD from the start on those press releases was, whatever you were doing that night, we don't care. We just not want to know about this crime. Which tells me there's a lot of shady ass shit going on in that town. And that's why if it was someone that was, you know, selling to or something, that saw something, they're going to just label them as an informant so they don't have to testify because they don't want that dirt out there in the world. This is a murder investigation. Your first concern should be justice for the victims and their families, not public relations for your school, for your cash cow. And that's what's wrong with every organization in this country. Money. It's all about the Benjamins.